Hello, and this will be the second tutorial for lesson number 11 called Nested Loops in a Maze. We've already completed puzzles 1 through number 7. This tutorial will cover 8 through 13, so let's begin. Click on number 8. And this is also a plants versus zombie puzzle. The instructions say get the zombie to the sunflower using the fewest number of blocks possible, which means that they want you to use a maximum of 8 blocks. And just to, and as always, we're going to begin by by solving for the smallest com, uh, portion of the puzzle, which is to get the zombie from where he's standing to this corner right here, which means he would take one, two, three different steps. So begin by getting a loop with a number three. Put a three in there and a move forward. Let's see if this gets into the corner. Go ahead and click run. And it does. Now here, he is still facing this uh, flesh-eating plant. So we need to turn him so he's facing south. And in this case, it'll be a turn left. Good. Now the next portion uh, is to get him to this corner. And the reason why I'm not putting, I'm not stopping at this point is because even though he took a turn left here, when he gets to this point, he, there's two things that are going to happen. Number one, Getting him here would be the halfway mark of the puzzle. Also, when he turns here, instead of turning left, he'll actually have to turn to the right, which is different than this. So we actually have to continue until this point. So again, he's going to have to take another three steps. Put a move forward in there. And as I said a moment ago, when he gets to this corner, he's going to have to turn the opposite from the last turn. The last one is a turn left, so this time he'll do a turn to the right. As noted earlier, there's a couple things I want you to notice here. This is the halfway mark. Also, he's standing the same way that he was when he was over here. Secondly, I want you to notice that we have an eight block limit and we have now used seven blocks, which means we can only use one more block and that is going to be a second uh, loop. So we're going to take this entire program, which was sufficient for half the puzzle, and we're going to ask him to do, repeat every single step a second time. So another loop with a two, and we're going to take all of this program and nest it inside of the bigger one. This brings us to a total of eight out of eight and is sufficient to complete the puzzle. Click continue when you are ready. That was puzzle number eight. Here is puzzle number nine. We do have a nine block limit. We have two blocks in use already. We have a one run and a move forward. I'm not quite sure why they put this on here. But if I was going to solve the very first portion of this puzzle, it would be to get him from where he's standing to this corner right here, which means we would use a loop. And this move forward that was already there is going to go inside of the loop. He will have to take zero, one, two, three, four, five different steps here. And let's see if that is sufficient to get him to that corner. Good. And at that corner, he will have to take a turn left. Now, because this shape is essentially a spiral, every single turn will be a turn left. Let's put a turn left in here. Good. Now, the next question I would like to um, address is how many times will he have to repeat this little program? What I mean is taking five steps and taking a turn left. Well, we know he did it once here. You only have to do it a second time here as well. This is another five steps, which we'll have to take a turn left. And then a third time, he will have to take five steps and turn left. But then this is a different number of steps. So I need him to do this program exactly three times. But that will not get him all the way to the goal. Let's just worry about this for now. Put a, a loop on here and put a number three because I need him to complete three rows that it, where he will have to move forward five times and turn left. This is what it looks like. There's the first row, second row, and the third row. Now, the reason we didn't include the next row is because this is not five steps. This is just three steps. He'll still have to take a turn left and take another three steps. So essentially, we will have to leave this alone and add to the bottom of it. Now, it sounds like he has to take three steps. Put a three in there and a move forward. And he will have to take another turn left at the end of it. And 
And here I'm going to ask you to notice a couple different things. He only has three more steps to go, but our limit was nine blocks and we're already at eight. That's only a one block difference, which means we need to use a different, another loop. Well, it just so happens that if we ask him to do this mini program a second time, it will include those three steps that he has to take. And there's a little turn at the very left that will not affect the program in any way. But we do need to ask him to do all of these things twice. This brings us to a total of nine out of nine blocks. And here we will run the program. There we are. When you are ready, go ahead and click continue. That was puzzle number nine. Here is puzzle number 10. It is a challenge puzzle, but we're going to go ahead and, and click I am ready. And take a look at this. Every single flower has a number 12 on it. This is the shape of a square. Um, but you are supposed to be able to complete this puzzle using a, a maximum of seven blocks. And while this may be intimidating, we're going to use the exact same process that we have for every puzzle up until this point. Begin with the smallest portion that he has to solve. And the smallest portion is the square that he's standing on. There are 12 flowers that he's standing on. So the very first thing you could ask him to do is to collect those 12 flowers. And that's perfectly acceptable if that's what you want to do. You can also ask him to take a step forward first. So for example, I could ask him to take a step forward, and this is what it looks like. And now that he's standing on there, I could ask him to collect 12 nectars and put a 12 in there. This would be one step and collects 12 nectars. You can see the number changing all the way to zero. Next question, how many times would he have to do this for this entire top row? And usually students will say four. And I'm going to show you why that is not correct. Again, this is one step and one group of flowers. If we ask him to do it four times for that first row, the number four will not work. Let me show you why. There's the second one, third one, and he will actually try to take a fourth step and he crashes. So instead of asking him to do it four times for this uh, top row, we're going to ask him to do it just three times. This is what it looks like. Notice that we have a seven block limit. We're already at five. And now before we, can, before we do anything else, we need to make him turn to the right because he is still facing the wrong direction. Look, we have a seven block limit. We're already at six. We can only add one more block to this program. And usually that is an indicator that the, that the only other block that we can add is going to be another repeat loop. So now that we have established that this is the proper program for one entire row plus the turn, that means we need to make him do everything a number of times. Now, the number that will go in this outside loop, the one that everything else is nested inside of, is the number of rows that he does have to complete. Now, you'll notice from the puzzle, this is the shape of a square, and a square has four sides. So we will put a number four inside of that. This brings us to seven out of seven blocks. Reset it and run it. And this will also address those 12 flowers that he was standing on right at the beginning. And then we made him move forward without collecting them. They will be collected here at the end of this program. The only reason it's taking so long is because he is having to collect 12 of them each time. And there we are. And when you are ready, please click continue. That was puzzle number 10. And we will move on to puzzle number 11. As always, we will begin with the smallest portion of the puzzle here, which is this group of four flowers. So he will need to take one step forward and collect four of those. This is get nectar. Let's make sure that that works. One step and collects four of them. 
Next question, how many times would you have to do this? And one way to figure that out is just to count the number of groups of flowers. And it turns out that there are five of them. So we could simply ask him to complete this little program a total of five times. Again, this is just for the flowers. Great. Now there is a honeycomb here at the very bottom here, which means that we will not have to, we will not change anything here, but rather we will add something to the bottom of this program. He does in fact still have to take one more step. And then when he does, he will have to make honey four times. So we will need another repeat loop with a number four, but this time we'll put a make honey block on the inside. And that will bring us to a total of eight out of eight blocks. Reset it and run the program. Great. Go ahead and click continue when you are ready. That was puzzle 11. Here is puzzle 12. Again, begin with the smallest portion, which is just him taking one step and one make honey. Let's make sure that that is correct. Good. The next question is how many times would he have to do this for this entire row? And it turns out that there are five of them. So we would ask him to do this a total of five times. Let's make sure that, that, we, that we are okay with that. Now we do have, good. Now we do have a six block limit and we're already at four. So that means we can only add two more blocks. Before he can do anything else, he is looking the wrong direction. So we'll, we're going to make him turn to the left. We are now at five blocks out of six. The, that means that we can only get one more block. Well, it just so happens that he does have to make honey five more times. So what we're going to do is we're going to ask him to do this entire program a second time. There's our sixth block. Ask him to do everything twice. Reset and run the program one more time. Very good. Go ahead and click continue when you are ready. That is puzzle number 12. And here is puzzle number 13, the last one of this unit. And it is a multiple choice question. The directions say, look closely at the code below this code down here. It is a nested loop. How much honey will the bee make when you click run? Your choices are A, 4, B, 8, C, 10, or D, 12. If the bee were to run this program, how many honey would he make? Your job is to choose one of these, A, B, C, or D. Once you have chosen one of these, this block will turn orange. Go ahead and click it. The B will run this program, and then the computer will tell you if you have chosen correctly or not. If you have chosen correctly, congratulations. If you chose incorrectly, please don't worry about it. Click continue anyway. Because this is the last puzzle of the unit, your next screen will show you a picture of a certificate. You do not have to do anything with the certificate. It simply means that you are done and you can close code.